Good morning, guys. So I'm here at the gym. It's Thursday, March 2nd, I believe. It's already March. I'm going to try to get in some upper body work. Very, very light. I'm actually going to go into the weight room and do, I'm going to try bench, arm, like, bicep and tricep work, some light shoulder work. So I'm going to see, I'm going to see how that goes. Of course, it's going to be very, very light. And if anything feels uncomfortable or painful, of course I will stop. But it's been four weeks since my injury, and I'm hoping, hoping to be able to do some light strength work again. So let's see how this goes. It's so good to see you guys again. I got my new camera. Um, it came into Best Buy. I had to order it so it was shipped to the store and that's why it took so long. And I wanted to show you guys real quick the other lens I was talking about in my q and How it's a lot bigger. This is the other lens. So Matt's wanting to get into photography and he wants to start building his Instagram as we travel. He, he likes to take pictures. He's kind of artistic. It's weird. He wants to use that camera and I want him to use it um, to take some cool looking pictures. I've never been good at taking really professional looking pictures, but the workout today was pretty good. I didn't film the last two exercises that I did. Incline dumbbell bench with 20 pounds for three sets of 12. And I supersetted that with incline dumbbell curls with 10 pounds for three sets of 12. So super simple. And then I got on the elliptical for 15 minutes while I answered emails and put up an Instagram post. So I'm really, really, I'm just relieved and excited to be able to do something so far there's no pain i'm feeling more optimistic than i was with my last um, mental breakdown video but you guys know that good and bad days happen you guys see more of the good there's not a whole lot of bad you know whenever it comes to how i feel and my my overall optimism but they happen i just figured it might be helpful for somebody to see that we all have them I'm positive. And I'm hoping to be able to teach my cycle class this week, because it's been four weeks now. So people that took my class probably forgot about me, but that's okay. We're gonna sit and talk about intuitive eating. Yes, I'm gonna answer a few questions that I would have for somebody in my position. So somebody that's gone between IFYM and intuitive eating, you guys will see in just a second. So let's get to it. All right, welcome back guys. So. Intuitive eating. I am back and I'm working on intuitive eating once again. I think this is like my third or fourth round um, working towards eating intuitively and one thing that comes up in my own mind when people switch back and forth from IFYM or flexible dieting or honestly any form of dieting to intuitive eating is why. Why go back and forth from one to the other? And I'm sure that you guys have that question too anytime that I tell y'all I'm intuitive eating. One thing that I tell my clients whenever we work on tracking their macros and flexible dieting is that IFYM or flexible dieting is a means to an end. Essentially, it's another diet. Although it's more flexible and you have a little bit more leeway as far as your food choices, you have a lot more freedom, you can actually choose what you want to eat on a day-to-day -day basis, it's still a diet. It's still restricting your calories or having caloric guidelines, macronutrient guidelines in some way. You come from a past of long-term dieting, like me, just depending on your history with dieting and with your body and with food, flexible dieting, tracking your macros, IFYM can actually become more restrictive in the long run. So you have to know going into it that it's not going to be something that you should keep doing for the rest of your life. So it's a way to 
let go of that restrictive mentality with food and to realize that you can have some ice cream or cookies and still make physical progress. You can still be a healthy, happy, fit individual even if you don't eat 100% clean all the time. It kind of helps you get in tune with what you really enjoy as far as foods go because I used to just eat because I thought that this food was the best. I thought that you know, chicken and rice or broccoli was going to get me skinny or <laughs> toned. And I would avoid the other foods like the plague because I thought that if I had one cookie, I would gain 10 pounds instantaneously or all my hard work would be undone. Flexible dieting is a way to introduce to yourself the idea that there are no inherently good or bad foods. Not one food will make you obese, just like one will not make you fit or skinny or whatever you want to call it. So it's it's a means to an end. And having gone through several years of tracking my intake, I have a really good feel for the foods that I enjoy. I no longer worry about having Oreos in the house because I'm gonna binge on them. It's been an amazing way to let go of that restrictive mentality with food and to practice grace with myself. You know, even if I don't hit my macros on point, I know that life goes on I know that things are gonna be okay and I know that tomorrow is a new day to keep working towards the goals that I might have. It's a really, really good way to stay on specific targets. So if you're trying to make weight for a meet um, or a specific purpose, like a powerlifting meet, as I was doing before I got injured, then tracking your macros is a surefire way to keep things as consistent and on point as possible to get down to that level. If you don't know what you're taking in as far as calories go, you can't manipulate your body weight or your body fat percentage one way or the other. Same thing goes with contest prep dieting. You can't necessarily intuitively eat into a prep, and I wouldn't recommend that in the first place. If you are needing to lose body fat or get to a very specific or very lean state, tracking your macros, tracking your intake is going to be a lot more beneficial than not knowing what you're taking in. Moving on to intuitive eating, like I said, tracking your macros is not the long-term goal. I don't want for anybody to feel like they need to track their intake or log their food into my fitness pal for the rest of their life. So you take what you learned from flexible dieting and you take the idea of not needing to eat an entire box of cookies to feel satisfied, knowing that you can have cookies and still be healthy and fit, and taking that into intuitive eating and actually tuning into your body's hunger. So when I wake up in the morning, I don't feel like I have to eat something immediately, but if I'm hungry, I will think about what do I wanna eat? And legitimately, I think about what I want to eat, not what's going to fit my macros, not what food is going to magically make me fit or lean, but what food do I wanna eat? Like this morning I had a bowl of protein sludge with peanut butter and chocolate shredded wheat cereal, and it was delicious. Some other mornings I feel like having a tofu scramble. Some morning, heck, I'll feel like having ice cream and chocolate chips, and I do. And life is okay, life goes on. <laughs> and it's about knowing that and embracing that and sitting down to your meal and enjoying it and thinking about each bite and thinking about how the food tastes and how it feels, the environment that you're in and the people that you're with and just the whole food experience. And rather than just scarfing it down or force feeding food down because you feel like you need to eat it, you eat because you enjoy it and you eat because it's fuel for your body. Transitioning into that mindset, so beneficial if you're burned out on tracking your macros, if, you, if you're tired of dieting, to be completely honest, the bigger picture and the bigger goal, and I highly recommend that you guys check out the book, I'm going to link it below, is to stop dieting and stop worrying about fat-free, sugar-free, gluten-free, if you're not gluten intolerant. All of this stuff that keeps us restricted and going back from diet to diet to diet. If you found that you continuously gain and lose the same five or 10 pounds, or if you always feel restricted, or if you can't focus on anything else other than food or you're binging, this book would be so beneficial for you guys to read. So my plan this time around with intuitive eating is to literally just do that. I don't have a set plan to lose body fat. I don't have a set plan to gain lots of muscle at this time. I literally can't gain muscle. I'm not working out that much. My plan right now is to just live life and eat according to my body. If I'm hungry, I eat. Focus on my food. I stop when I'm satisfied, not whenever I feel sick because I've had so much. And if I do happen to overeat, then it's okay.
and I keep moving on. I'm not focusing on if my weight is going up or down. I'm just focusing on food and life and fueling my body and performing in the gym when I can day to day and focusing on the new adventures that my husband and I are going to be going on because I know that bringing my food scale and, and tracking my macros isn't going to be the most rational thing to do while we're traveling all across the country. And so I'm setting myself up to be able to be present and in the moment and not always worried about food. And that's the goal with this. So that's the short story of why I'm intuitively eating right now. I don't plan on getting back on any cutting processes at this time. It's a lifelong journey, you guys. So I would love to talk more about this. I wanna do a video on my tips to transition into intuitive eating. Whether you come from tracking your macros or coming from any other type of diet, I wanna do that video. And then I'm also going to be doing a video about the actual principles of intuitive eating that are lined out in this book. So. Like I said, check out the link below. Um, if you guys have read it, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have any questions about intuitive eating, I'm going to open it up in the comment section below so that I can create more videos and bring more content about this topic to you guys because I love it. It's awesome. It is such an amazing step after tracking your macros and making peace with food. And it really, really brings it into that lifestyle aspect because you can't track your macros forever, guys. You can't do it forever. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up before you go. Please, please, please drop some comments below. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.